y'all, I'm Laura Richardson with Relevate and we're Real Estate Elevated. So today I have the pleasure on this week's episode of talking about how to pick a good auto mechanic. I have Tim Childers here with Real World Automotive and he's gonna talk to us a little bit just about car maintenance, but also moving to North Carolina, how that can look a little different. And then in the world of automation, kind of just thinking about some trends that have started to happen with the used car industry, as well as if you're moving here from across country, kind of dynamic, what do you need to do to your vehicle when you get here? Or if you're like myself and you already live here and maybe don't take care of your vehicle as well as you should, what do you need to be aware of? What's the big ticket item? So Tim, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. So give us a little bit of background on how you got into this industry. Um, what is it a passion? Was it a hobby? Like how did it fall into your lap? Uh, well, uh, when I was 15 years old, I didn't have a summer job. My uncle came to me and uh, actually called my mother and asked, does, does he want a summer job? Mm -hmm. I'd never been in an auto shop before, and I said, sure. And uh, we were, had it was Griffin's Transmission Service then, and uh, I went in and I worked for two days and went home and told my mother that uh, I'm going to be a mechanic. Mm. Yep. So uh, after that, I uh, finished high school. I went to the Army for a very short time, uh, come back out, and then went back into auto mechanics with my uncle, mm -hmm. and I just never left it. We were building transmissions and all of that stuff, and uh, just recently just returned to the building that I helped him build mm -hmm. and that uh, we moved his business into 25 years ago. So I just I moved that. Comes full circle. We have come full circle. I just, uh, just moved back into that building two weeks ago. It has been... Uh, uh, it's been fun. A little bit of a whirlwind. That That is a, a understatement. So just thinking about kind of how you got to this point. So thinking back to high school and the development of skills needed to go into this industry, what advice do you have for students maybe that are thinking this might be a possibility, but based on the current curriculum, it may not necessarily be something easy for them to obtain hours or observation or even contacts like yourself. Do you have words of encouragement for them? Uh. If you want to get in, get into it early, mm -hmm. the industry is changing so much. Technology is changing. It's all going to computers now. Yeah. Um, so if they'd like to turn wrenches and they'd like that kind of stuff, souping up cars, putting parts on, things like that, get into it early. Uh, you find in high schools now, the school systems just don't have the budgets for it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the vocational, vo vo excuse me, vocational yeah. and uh, trade schools and stuff like that or mm -hmm. trade classes in schools are just being shortchanged, so they're going away. I had auto shop in my school when I was going to high school, and I took that, mm -hmm. but that school no longer has it anymore. So yeah. it's kind of hard to do. So I would suggest uh, just don't be afraid to walk into a shop and ask. If you're of age and you want to do this, we love to bring new people in, mm -hmm. teach them from the ground up on how we want them to be. And the industry now is so short on technicians that we would take young people and mm -hmm. teach them how they want to be and teach them what we what they need to know to be there. Yeah. Well, something as somebody who taught in education for 14 years prior to real estate, something that kind of popped into my brain when you were talking about that is there's a lot of hybrid programs now where you can start gaining like college credits or working with a community college right. that may actually have those vocational or trades type programs that the high school can't have anymore due to lack of budget or staffing or mm -hmm. just the hours in the day and the requirements with testing now so that might be another option to kind of bridge absolutely. that gap and jump into that absolutely wake tech has a awesome mm -hmm. uh automotive tech program and uh then they try they actually do try to place their students into auto shops around the triangle mm -hmm. to get them into the industry they actually move forward with it and get you in there that's awesome to hear so you mentioned just a second ago about the trends and things that are shifting in your industry mm -hmm. so something that i know has been a big shift is the used car industry because i know we're dealing with this in the housing market low inventory high demand prices get driven up mm -hmm. i mean obviously you have normal appreciation with houses typically cars you have depreciation but in this case, it seems to be the opposite that's going on with used cars. Can you talk about that for a second? Uh, the used car market is just like the housing market now, mm -hmm. and it is completely flipped. Um, now cars are holding value longer. Uh, used cars that people won't used to, you go into a dealership lot, one of the, the bigger dealerships, uh, the major you know chains, mm -hmm. you would go onto their lot and you wouldn't find anything over 100,000 miles. And, they, and if it was anything wrong with it, a lot of times they would either fix it or not keep it. 
Yep. Um, now I am seeing cars being sold at those big dealerships mm -hmm. with well over 100,000 miles. They're not doing any maintenance to it. They're sticking it straight, maybe changing the oil, sticking it straight on the lot and selling it and people are buying it because what else are you going to buy? Mm -hmm. You're not going to, you're not going to find that truck anywhere else like that for that price. So take it or leave it because mm -hmm. they know that they're going to sell it to the next person that comes. Yeah. So something that we saw that's kind of a, a similar scenario, right? Where you either take it or leave it. You don't really get to look at the underbelly before walking into it. So right. during the market that we had back in 2021, a lot of people were doing sight unseen purchasing of yes. houses where the listing might have a photo if you were lucky and maybe limited information, but nothing major. And you had to decide, okay, well, it looks like the basic outline or the previous MLS listing from 10 years ago matches what we're looking for we'll go in significantly over list and then you walk in and it's a really bad situation exactly so i know we talked to our clients through how to handle that and mm -hmm. still have some protections and negotiate a good offer so what can you speak to the consumer in the automotive industry what can they do to protect themselves uh well never buy sight unseen you got some things now that you can buy the vending machines mm -hmm. uh, i've done that with a car mm -hmm. and i was not happy when i got it uh, I am a mechanic. I do own a shop. So mm -hmm. I decided to keep the car because I could make all the repairs very reasonably. Yeah. Uh, to an average person, that would not have been a reasonable repairs that I had to make. Uh, you would have been very upset. Uh, and I see it every day. Uh, my biggest advice would be get a pre-purchase inspection on the vehicle. Go to your local mechanic. Go to somebody that you trust. And try not to hop from mechanic to mechanic. Mm -hmm. Even when you... Even when you uh, have a car that you've had for a long time, go to the person who knows that vehicle. Okay. But if you go to your local mechanic, get it checked out, get it looked at. Now you can buy knowing. If you buy knowing that you've got these issues and you accept that, okay, I'm paying this much for this car. Mm -hmm. I've got this much I'm going to have to spend on it to make it safe or right or the way I want it. Then you know that you've bought that. You can't be mad, but if you yeah. buy a vehicle and you don't know that you've got to spend $5,000 on it right after you buy it, then it tends to upset you. And, yeah. And then we catch the brunt of that because I'm telling you all these things mm -hmm. that are wrong that we have no control over and you were caught in a bad situation. It sounds like a very similar conversation that we have when it comes to appraisals. Mm -hmm. So we saw appraisal gaps like crazy in the last market where somebody would think that they were going under contract, let's say $800,000 on a home, but it's not going to appraise above seven. So therefore you're walking into a hundred thousand dollar of a hole, yep. um, being able to give that to them in advance. So if they want to make a silly decision, at least it's an informed silly decision. That's right. It's kind of the same concept. It's exactly, it's exactly the same, except it's a much smaller scale. Exactly. So thinking about North Carolina, so we have folks moving here from everywhere. So yes. thinking about the people who are coming from like the Northeast, obviously they deal with a lot of salt on the road and wear and tear on their vehicle mm -hmm. that we're not going to see down here just because we typically deal with more ice than snow. Um, so what do you see as far as a transition of mindset of expectation, for example, of folks moving from other states when it comes to their vehicle maintenance? Uh, when, uh, when people come in from up north, the rust does add here it adds to the price of the repair mm -hmm. especially if they're coming from upstate new york or, or anywhere where there's a lot of snow minnesota michigan places like that okay the rust up there is horrible so when the car comes to up there they're used to dealing with the rust mm -hmm. down here we're not so up there where you may get a repair down here we're going to replace but once we take that stuff off your car that is giving you that trouble and put it back on then you're not going to have that rust or have that problem anymore down here. So in the long run, it's better for you. Mm -hmm. um, we will always still try to repair things that are rusty if we can, but sometimes it's just better to to just go on and pay for it and cry once than yeah. keep messing around and crying more times. So thinking about general car maintenance, not just folks who are moving here from other locations. So I know that I'm notorious for seeing the light and just thinking that it's blinking at me, not necessarily telling me to do anything. We've only been talking about your car for about two months now. Yes. Hopefully Jason Richardson is not listening to this video, but <laughs> um, needless to say, when you see a light pop on in the car, mm -hmm. Is it just giving you a heads up or does that mean there's something serious? Like somebody who does not have the knowledge that you do, mm -hmm. when do we need to pay attention? Uh, it depends on the light. Mm -hmm. generally, generally, if the light is yellow, it's a warning. Okay. Uh, if the light is red, stop. 
Got it. Um, but but that also depends on the light. Um, you have a you have a book in your vehicle to tell you what the lights are, mm-hmm. or if you have your own local mechanic or your own mechanic that you deal with all the time, like you you have me, you could just say, Tim, what's this light? Mm-hmm. Um, just know what the lights are. If the light is ever flashing, that is usually a bad sign, unless it's a little tire light. It will flash when you have a bad sensor, but that's just telling you how much air you got. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if your check engine light is flashing, that means uh, catastrophic damage is coming. Um, the biggest light that we that we tend to see and most people don't pay attention to is that little oil change light. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to know what that oil change light does, and a lot of people will only change their oil when that light comes on. Okay. But there are different types of oils. Know what's going in your car. If, you're, if your local mechanic puts a sticker in the window, mm-hmm. go buy your sticker because most of the time he has that set by the type of oil and the specs of the oil that he's putting in your car. Interesting. Okay. And a lot of people don't know that. There's a lot of different oil and oil filters that go longer than others. Mm-hmm. I recommend that you change your oil at least every 5,000 miles and run full synthetic oil. That's what I do on my vehicles and I have very little trouble. Yeah. So speaking of different types of vehicles, I know you guys also specialize in fleet maintenance. Do you mind talking about that? Because we have a lot of people who are moving their businesses to Mm -hmm. the triangle. So how do you help them? Uh, The the way we help them the most is I see that it's a fleet vehicle. And if that vehicle's not on the road, you have a driver sitting in my lobby that's not making you money. Mm -hmm. That's a business expense that most folks can occur, especially these days. Um, and that vehicle's sitting in my shop. It's not not making you any money. So my my job is to get it going, get it up, back out there in the field like it's supposed to be, and not have you in my shop. But get ahead of your maintenance. Tell you when you got things coming. Let you schedule around it. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that we do very well. So as we kind of wrap this up, what are some things that you really feel like is important that sets you guys apart from other shops or that people need to keep in mind when they're interviewing their auto mechanic? Like how can they pick the best person for them? Uh, just look at their how genuine they're being. Mm-hmm. Um, with me, I look at every vehicle as if it's my mother mm-hmm. or my daughter. And if my mother was to come to me and go, they told me I needed brakes and I look at it, and I would be mad if they were trying to sell my mother brakes based on the condition that I saw, mm-hmm. then I wouldn't sell them to you. I don't know if that makes any sense or not, but it's kind of, I look at it as if it was my mom's car. And if it, it would make me upset to know that somebody's trying to sell that to my mom, then I'm not going to go sell it to you. Mm-hmm. I look at it as my mom and my daughter. If I would let my daughter drive on it, I'll let you drive on it. So it sounds like honesty and integrity are what you're building your business off of. Absolutely. hundred percent. And Perfect. uh Auto mechanics have got a, a, a bad rep in some places about not being honest. Most of us are. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's really good to know. So, guys, if you're moving to the triangle and you're looking for a local shop that's going to take care of you, help explain things, and just really make sure that your whole family unit stays intact, including that vehicle that might have wear and tear on it, like myself, make sure that you go see the guys over at Real World Automotive. I'm Laura Richardson with Relevate, and make sure to like, share, and follow if you feel like this information was helpful to you, or there's somebody that needs to come get their car taken care of. We'll see you next time.